Welcome to Hawkeye Skunk Works. I'm Joe, and this is part two, talking about Explore Bumper Stuff. So in video one, if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out also. It doesn't really matter what order you watch it in. We talked about the front bumper and tow hooks and skid plate, and today we're going to move around to the back bumper and kind of talk about that and the tow hooks back there. Um, kind of had some interest on what I did to the back bumper here over on, the, on Facebook and Instagram, so we'll talk about that. So on my back bumper, you can see is obviously trimmed. Um, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, so what I did first off was I came in, pulled the bumper cover off, which is pretty simple. There's plastic push pins and bolts and stuff under the tail lights. So you pull all that off and there's foam, this hard foam underneath that that's got to come out. And then the hitch on these is actually basically a rear cross member, so it goes frame rail to frame rail, and it's like two, two and a half inch square tubing. It's actually really stout. So, uh, to gain a little bit more ground clearance, because these things have, it's kind of like a weird fat lower lip where the back bumper sticks out so stinking far, and especially if you're running any kind of suspension lift, the way the geometry on these works is as soon as you lift that strut, the wheel wants to start coming in towards the inside of the vehicle, which gives you even more overhang. So, to help with some of that departure angle, what I did was I took the rear cross member slash receiver off, and there's three bolts on each side of the frame rail. I took those out. I flipped it over, uh, cut off these, and then welded them back up to the underside, or the new underside. And then I had to come in here, I'll try to show you guys the best I can, but it's really, um, if you check yours out, it'll be a lot more self-explanatory. And uh, I, the bolts all, the bolt, two of these bolts lined up, I had to make the holes just a little bit bigger on the bumper bracket so they would line up. And then there's a third bolt up in here, everything's black and painted black now and, and dirty so it's hard to see. I did have to drill those holes into the frame rails for them to line up. Side note, for drilling big holes like that in steel, um, I bought a set of step drill bits from Harbor Freight. It's a two pack, smaller one and then a really big one. And they worked amazing. I'm still using them on steel and they work better pretty much than any drill bit I've ever had. Um, I have a little squeeze bottle that I got like from the kitchen supply section at um, Walmart and I have um, just some, I think it's just 30 weight um, mobile one synthetic oil in it. I actually lube my AR with it and probably gonna get some hate on that but I've read that it works really good and I've had no problems with it. Anyway, so I use that uh, for my AR and I use it as cutting oil um, just because it's, it's easy to use in the squirt bottle for my drill press and my hand drill and those drill bits have been performing so well so if you need some step bits definitely go to Harbor Freight get yourself a 20% off coupon and pick up a set I promise you will not be disappointed moving on so yeah after I flipped that re-welded the uh, chain mounts for the hitch and re-drilled the holes and bolted it on. You can see how much clearance I've gained um, based on the spare tire. Now this is a, a 265 75 16 tire so it's much bigger than the factory tire and before the hitch sat about to here so I've gained about three inches and I obviously gotten the questions well your tire hangs down below. Yes but that's what that rack is for, for when I'm doing trail stuff. If I need to, I throw it up there and be done with it. It works good down there for the time being. And then what I did was these mounts uh, here had some kind of goofy metal on it from 
probably you know from the factory where it was being transported and and molded and, and mounted and stuff so I sliced those off I capped it off to make it flush and then I got some steel here that I trimmed and I welded at the top and then just kind of heated up clamped and bent around so it's kind of like a frame rail skid uh, guard that'll you know protect anything protect the plastic if I hit the ground and uh, yeah I did post some pictures of this on Instagram as I did it if you're interested in that sorry that I didn't film it because it was kind of a trial by error and I didn't even know how it was gonna turn out so now the tow hooks are again some Harbor Freight specials and do with those as you will came with half inch hardware I powder coated them because we all know that only red tow hooks actually work for recovery I can't remember the tow rating off the top of my head but for anything that I will be in they should be more than sufficient and yes I will keep in mind that they are from Harbor Freight when I use them they have these retainer clips so your straps don't fall off I actually really like that even though I'm kind of a little cheesy and again the bolt holes one hole was already there in the bracket and through the frame and I just had to drill one other one these are bolted directly to the frame through that bumper bracket uh, at least one of the holes is and then the other one is to the bracket but the entire bracket is held to the frame rail by four total bolts so it should get offer lots of support also this uh, cross member comes all the way out and it's awesome that it's um, two two and a half inch something like that steel square tubing which will make a great starting point if you wanted to weld some other things on the back of your bumper spoiler alert and then you can see what I did was I basically I cut my bumper to follow the bottom of that uh, receiver hitch mount and just grouped it down to the original body line uh, through some Harbor Freight aerosol bed liner on it a little Amazon special door edge molding trim which is held up really good uh, I was just gonna continue to comp cut all the way across but on my driver's side up underneath this quarter panel is all the ducting and the tubing for the uh, rear AC and I really want that to stay protected I'm actually gonna bend up an aluminum skid plate for the other side to, to cover that even more so as you may or may not be able to tell the lighting is definitely fading and I'm gonna wrap this video up for more information or questions as always please feel free to leave comments down below I've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of great comments from you guys and I sure do appreciate it or you can always email me hawkeyeskunkworks at gmail.com or contact me through any other form of social media Facebook Twitter Instagram be sure to head on over to those pages like and subscribe I really appreciate all the enthusiasm and the support there as well uh, I guess while I've got it on don't forget to check out your Hawkeye Skunk Works thumbs up Second Amendment t-shirt those are still for sale great shirts and the hats uh, not wearing the hat right now but uh, you can contact me about that stuff it's all over Instagram and Facebook and there's a video about all that stuff as well super easy to order really secure I've got uh, many sizes still available so I guess I will wrap this video up and uh, I like I said I've got more videos planned I just need to uh, find a good place to start doing a little bit more work on this thing so thumbs up for the video subscribe I really appreciate that have a good night and stay tuned we'll see you later